Hey everybody, this is Paul. Welcome to your first lesson in cryptography. So to explain what cryptography is, I'm just going to start out with a little example. So let's say that we've got some person. So let's just go ahead and name this person Paul, since that's a pretty neat name. And then let's say that Paul has a friend. Let's pretend like Paul and his friend are on different sides of the world, but Paul has an important message to send his friend. But because Paul is on the other side of the world, he can't just hand his friend this message. So now let's pretend like this message that Paul has has some secret information that he only wants his friend to know about and nobody else. Well, if Paul sends his letter to the friend around the world, there's going to be a whole bunch of people that will be handling this letter. So there's a risk that as Paul sends this letter, Somewhere along the way, the letter may be intercepted by somebody other than Paul's friend. And if this letter falls into the hands of the wrong person, that person may read the secret message. Sometimes that person will keep the message, or he could take note of that information and then continue to pass the letter on to Paul's friend. So how can Paul and his friend be sure that nobody in between has uncovered the secret message? One thing Paul could do is he could use cryptography to encrypt the message. That way, if somebody in the middle got the message, they would be unable to understand its contents. So when Paul first writes the letter, he writes it in English because that's the language he speaks. So if Paul wrote his letter in English, Spanish, Chinese, German, French, or any of the common languages that a multitude of people understand, we would consider that this message is written in plain text. So if the message is written in plain text, that means it's very easy for anybody who speaks that language to understand its contents. So what Paul needs to do is he needs to encrypt his message before he sends it. So what does it mean to encrypt a message? Let's pretend like Paul's secret message is the word fun. He doesn't want anybody other than his friend to read this secret message. Well, anybody that speaks English can read the letters F-U-N and understand that Paul is trying to send the message fun to his friend. So in order for Paul to encrypt the plain text fun, he converts the letters F-U-N to numbers. Then once his message is in numerical form, he can use a key to modify the values of this number. We can think of the key as mathematical operations that we can perform on the numerical value of Paul's message. After applying the key to this numerical value, we end up with a new numerical value which is known as ciphertext. So now if Paul puts his ciphertext in an envelope and sends the envelope to his friend, Paul won't have to worry about somebody in the middle discovering the secret message. If somebody in the middle discovers the message, they won't be able to decrypt the message without a proper key. Now if the message continues to Paul's friend, Paul's friend will need a way to decrypt the message and recover the original plaintext. So in order to convert the ciphertext into plaintext, Paul's friend needs to decrypt the ciphertext. In order to decrypt the ciphertext, the friend will need a decryption key. Using the decryption key, the friend will be able to convert the ciphertext into the numerical value corresponding to the plaintext. Once the friend has the plaintext value, he can convert it back into the original message. Now that the numerical value is converted back to the English language, the friend has retrieved the original plain text that was sent in Paul's message. So in a nutshell, that's how cryptography works. We start with plain text, which is written in a language that is recognized by a multitude of people. We convert that plain text into a numerical value. Then we encrypt that numerical value with an encryption key. After we have encrypted the numerical value, we end up with ciphertext. The ciphertext is unreadable to anyone who does not have the decryption key. The ciphertext can be safely sent across the world to Paul's friend, who uses the decryption key to convert the ciphertext back to the numerical value corresponding to the language that both Paul and his friend understand. So now we understand the basic process of how cryptography works. But what is the mathematics behind encryption and decryption? And how can Paul and his friend Friend who are halfway across the world agree on keys in secret. Stay tuned as I will be explaining these concepts and more in upcoming videos. Thank you guys for watching. Have an excellent day and if you haven't already don't forget to subscribe.